May I be well, happy, and peaceful. May my family be well, happy, and peaceful. May my teachers be well, happy, and peaceful. May the class of 2017 be well, happy, and peaceful. This blessing is part of my law culture. Welcome, students, staff, community members, family members, Director Rivera, and the class of 2017. My name is Tommy Borath, and this is my senior talk. Some of you might be surprised to see me this way today. Some of my former teachers might be surprised to know that I'm in honor of this semester, and I've been accepted to a four-year university. Some of my family members might be surprised to see me on stage giving a speech, and some of my former friends might be surprised by my offer today. Now, why is that? That is because I should be stubborn, angry, hard-headed, and I didn't care about my future. I'd done things in the past that I shouldn't have done. So I was faced with a decision. I had to decide whether my last year of high school, that I would leave myself, that, would, that, that I would reinvent who I was, or I would probably end up without a future. But me, personally, I chose to reinvent myself, and it wasn't easy. It took time and sleepless nights. But it was all worth it. Now today, for my senior talk, I want to teach the younger generation of GPA to reinvent themselves like how I did. Here are the five steps that I followed to become a man with a future. Step one, believe in yourself. Step two, calm down. <laughs> Step three, set goals. Step four, be a role model. Step five, win over adults. <laughs> research show that when a student, research show that when a student at a young age having a traumatic event happen to them are less likely to graduate, less likely to go to college, and most likely to behave disruptively in class. My history of trauma may partially explain why I spent so much time in the dean's office and ditching classes for the first five years here at GPA. One of the forms of childhood trauma of loss of a parent is before the age of 20. And finding peace, I had to confront my past. When I was eight years old, I knew that my father was sick, but I didn't know how serious it was. On December 4th, 2007, me and my family went to go see my father. As we sat down, Groups of my family members went to go see my father at his hospital bed. I didn't get to go see him because I was too young. Eventually, the doctor came out and said the patient passed away three minutes ago. I didn't know what that meant, but my family started crying and act angry. I knew that I should feel sad, but I didn't know it was death yet, so I was just mostly confused. As we went home, from the hospital, family and friends was already cooking at my house. Because in our law culture, we celebrate of a passing of a family member for about a week. Part of that Buddhist celebration meant that me and my brothers had to shave our head and eyebrows off to become a monk for a day during the viewing. I didn't know why I had to shave my head off, but I was embarrassed. Even at the, oh, I was so upset. Even at the funeral, I didn't know what was happening. Until later through life, I understood what death meant, that I would no longer see my father. When I went back to school, my principal gave me a whole month off to regenerate myself because I was so upset. After this experience, life hit me. I didn't have a father figure to look up to. So I began to look up to other men who were not good influence on me. That is when I began to get off track. I didn't care about school anymore. And by middle school, 
I was completely off track. At the end of my junior year, I was out of control. On the day of my sister's senior talk, I hit my lowest point. I didn't care about school anymore. I wanted to drop out. That is when one of my sisters took me to go see one of the monks. And when I went to go see him, I bowed down three times to show my respect to him. And he started to lecture me. He had this bucket of water on the side of him with some sticks. He started whispering some things to, his, to it, and, and he just dipped the sticks into the bucket of water and splashed some water on my head. It was crazy, because that monk knew what I was doing in the past, and he told me to stop on whatever I was doing before I end up somewhere I don't want to be. Before that day, so many people doubted me that I began to doubt myself. But that monk on that day believed in me. My family believed in me. That is when I took my first step towards reinventing myself. When the monk believed in me, I began to believe in myself. I saw that the path I was on is not where I want to be. My trauma had led me down into an angry person without a future who doubted my own abilities. When I began to believe myself again, I saw that there was another path for my life. At the temple, I learned that Buddhism is a path of practice, spiritual development, leading to insight, true nature, reality. Buddhist practice like meditation, means of changing yourself in order to develop qualities of awareness, kindness, and wisdom. Research shows that meditation is supposed to help calm people down. Me, personally, I necessarily didn't need to meditate. But I would go outside on whatever was making me mad and to take deep breaths. Now, can you guys try this with me now? Ready, set, go. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Good job, everyone. Lao Buddhists are very devout. Almost all Lao men join a monastery or temple for a short period of time. Many men become monks for the rest of their lives. Most people donate food to gain merit and to improve their karma. The Temple of Laos was once seen as La the Temple of Laos was once seen as universities by monks. Monks are highly respected and revered in Lao communities. When I began volunteering at the temple, I realized that I didn't have any goals. As I began to calm down and believe myself again, I started to set goals. I realized that paying for college was going to be a huge challenge for me. Because of my poor grades and past struggles in school, it was difficult for me to find scholarships that I qualify for. So I began to look at other ways to help out my family and to create a future for myself. I learned that if I served in the military, that I would go to college for free. I spoke with the recruiter, and I began to study for the ASVAB, which is the test you take in order to serve in the military. I studied hard for my classes, and I made honor roll for the first time here at GPA. Um, having a goal changed the way I spent my time. I realized that if I had focused in seventh grade, I might able, I might have been able to earn a scholarship in a CSU or UC school, straight out of high school. My father being a role model to me means taking responsibilities for what I did. 
Because younger people are looking up to me now. Instead of blaming external sources like other people for my problem, I began to internalize them and take responsibility for what I did. This helped me become a role model. I am a role model in my Lao community because giving back is by volunteering. Staying connected with my cultural roots, roots is a way to never forget where I came from. My father was a central part of the Lao community. He played a role at volunteering at the temple. With this, I hope to continue the legacy like my father of being a great role model. One of the hardest parts of reinventing myself was convincing other people that I had to change. In order to do that, I had to show teachers and other adults that I deserve their trust and that I will be a successful person. I have shown just, I have shown a lot of adults just the opposite through my behavior in class up until 11th grade. Fortunately, I had other adults in my life who believed in me anyways. They, show, they helped show me like little things like saying thank you sincerely and asking for help would win over adults who didn't know they knew me yet. As other adults and other students believed in me, it kind of got easier to believe in myself again and for my future. Now, if any of you in the audience today And if any of you in the audience today feel like you don't have a future for, for yourself, I'm going to give you a piece of advice that the monk gave me. If you want to be like me, a man with a future, believe in yourself. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Set goals. <laughs> Be a role model. And win over <laughs> adults. This concludes my senior talk.